Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I will talk a little bit about how to add in-app payments to a, an Android app in React Native. And uh, as you can see on the screen right now, I have an, an example app here uh, with some subscriptions and some code on the left side um, that basically um, handles the, the payment. If I click on one of these subscriptions, you can see it will pop up here with a test card uh, since I'm running this app in development and I can click on it, choose to subscribe, it will process, process say subscribe and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. And then I get this, you already subscribed. This is a logic I made and uh, I can click on subscribe here and it will take me to the, to the page uh, where I can manage my subscriptions. All right, cool. Now, how did I get this working? Now, this is a pretty long process. So I'm going to try to break it down uh, as simple as I can. Um, all right, so uh, I have a steps file here that kind of explains the different steps as simple as possible. So there are a bunch of pre-steps and these steps will be the ones that take most of the time. So the actual coding, coding inside your Ignata app is going to be quite uh, simple actually and uh, will be the one that takes the least amount of time. All right. So to the pre-steps. So the first step is to sign up for the Google Developer Program. And that's a one-time fee and you will be able to publish apps to the App Store. After you've done that, you will get access to the Google Play Console, which looks like this. And in here you can submit a, an app. Okay. And there are a few steps when it comes to submitting an app, uh, like adding a bunch of information uh, and add, adding pictures, uh, answering questions about the app, bunch of stuff. Um, if you're in the Play Console, there'll be a lot of menu items on the left and basically a check mark um, on the left side here to see what you're missing. When you've done all that, you can uh, submit the app for review. And if the Google team approves it, you can move on to the next step. And next step is to create a service account in the Google Developer Console. So it looks like this one. In here, you can create a service account. And the reason why you need a service account is because just like iOS, you want to be validating the receipts. And uh, to validate receipts, you need access to the Android Publisher API. So we want to create this uh, service account that gives us the rights to call that API. So it's important that uh, you give the service account the right permissions. What I've done in my app or this demo app is to add owner rights to the service account. When that's done, you can jump in back into the play console and here you can actually link your project from the Google developer console here. Okay. After that's been linked, uh, you can go to back to the play console and start adding your subscriptions. And that's pretty straightforward here. You can see right now I'm under, this is actually Danish, so maybe it's a little convoluted, but basically I'm, uh, let me jump back here. This is all the apps on this account. There's just one app. I went to settings here and then to link the project. But if I want to add subscriptions, I just click on my app and I can go to, um, let me see, actually these Danish translations are a little confusing for me. Mm, let me see. 
All right, products, yeah, products, products in the app here, you can add your subscriptions. Okay, that's not very useful since it's Danish. Anyway, you will find it. Now, after all that, after you submit a release, create the service account, uh, link it to your Play Console app, add the subscriptions, then you can go to the app. And in here, you do pretty much the same as in iOS. You call, um, oops, sorry. As the first thing, you call get subscriptions or get products or whatever it may be. If you have a subscription service, auto renewal subscription service, you would like to call get subscriptions. And um, that should um, spit out all your products uh, as an array. And then you just call request subscription or request purchase on the different items. It's going to trigger the menu, and if uh, the purchase goes through, it will jump into this uh, update purchase update listener here. And the only thing that's going on in here is that we need to have the receipt saved, and then we need to call this method called finish transaction. And that happens down here. All right. So this function call you see here is my method. Um, for saving the receipt and basically what I'm doing is taking the receipt payload that I define here add it into my serverless function here where I will where I save it all right so that, that that's pretty straightforward that's something we've seen before um, now for the back end so we also need some receipt validation on the back end and that code is also pretty simple I'm going to show you how that looks. So inside my index file here, you can see I created a service function uh, with Firebase. So a cloud function. Uh, only thing I'm doing is, uh, actually I'm using a library to make this a little more simple. So the one I'm using is uh, called Google APIs. Okay. So with this Google API, uh, I can instantiate a new auth. Google off here, where I basically just point at my service account key. So the service account was the account we made in the Google developer console earlier. Uh, after you create a service account, you can download a JSON file. In the code here, you can reference that file and then add what scope. So what API do you want access to? And in my case is Android publisher, because that's where I can do the validation of receipts. Okay, so adding this off Google off. Now all I have to do is uh, on this uh, Google object, I can call uh, Android Publisher version three, and then the method I like. And the one I like would like to call is I would like to grab a subscription. And the subscription I want to grab is the one that's um, passed in here as a parameter for this function. And here I just grab the product ID and the receipt token. Okay, so these product ID and receipt token, this is generated, uh, if you could jump back to payment, so when a purchase is successful, um, this purchase object here has both the product ID and that token. Okay, so I basically just extract that inside this function and uh, now for the validation. So first I check if the status is 200, if it is, okay, that's cool. Now in order to figure out if that subscription is still um, alive, I can just check for payment state. So this, uh, res this data that I get back from this API call uh, has a, uh, a payment status. So if I do dot here, you can see I get a bunch of properties on this um, data. And one of them is payment state. And if that's one, I know the subscription is still active. There's also a cancel reason. If this one is defined, I know that 
the subscription has actually been cancelled. Okay, so the server code looking pretty simple. Same for this code, of course, there's a little more code for this part, but it's uh, it's pretty simple. So the big part is the first bit here, setting up everything and submitting the release. All right, I know this was a very, uh, how to say, a very uh, quick description of how it goes down, but if you're like me in the beginning, uh, discovering this library, wanting to add uh, payments to your React Native app and then suddenly getting confused why nothing works you're getting a product array that's empty um, you don't really know where to start because the documentation is very limited but um, here you go do this stuff and then go back to the, your React Native app and add in the, the logic for handling the payment Okay, I hope this video was useful and uh, if you have any questions, put them down below. I have a working example here, so I should be able to help you out. Alright, peace.